what is man that I should be mindful of him? What is man? It is in you, the individual, that the great things happen. The kingdom of God comes to you. To you. Well, the Vedic tradition has its root and its fulfillment in you. The whole is actually contained within the individual. We think this whole vast world is so real. But if we tell you to believe that the visible kingdom is unreal, and that the invisible kingdom is real, is the supreme act of faith. To this faith, the kingdom of this world has already become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. The terms Christ, Messiah, and anointed are interchangeable terms. When you read them in the Bible, they're all interchangeable. They're all synonyms for the same thing. Christ is called the Son of God. For so is the anointed, the Son of God. And so is the Messiah. It means the same thing. So let us see now who this Messiah is. And what he is and where he is. I tell you, he is in you. So when Paul tells us, do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you fail to meet the test. He separates Jesus from the Christ. He speaks of Jesus as the Lord. But no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. He speaks of Jesus as the Lord. And then Christ as another. So in the book of Revelation, he speaks of the Lord and of his Christ. To tell you that he is the Father. You can read that in scripture. But how are you going to know that Jesus is the Father? He tells you, I am the Father. Who sees me, sees the Father. If he's a father, he has a son. At least he has a child. Now let us turn to the book of Acts. You'll find it in the fourth chapter. O sovereign God, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all within them, who by the mouth of our father David, thy servant, did say, Why do the nations rage? And why do the peoples imagine vain things against the Lord and his anointing? Against the Lord and his anointing. Now, in the King James Version of the Bible, that word anointed is translated as it should be, Christ. For the Greek is Christos, against the Lord and his Christ, not the Lord Jesus Christ, but the Lord Jesus and his Christ, his Son. The word translated servant, thy servant, David, the Greek for it means son. As told us in the second psalm, for he is quoting now the second psalm. What I've just quoted is from the second psalm. He attributes the author of the psalm, at least the one who wrote it, as David. He said, David is the author of the psalm. Now, here we find in the 18th psalm, one also says that David is the author. Great triumph you give to your king and show steadfast love to your anointed, to David and his descendants forever. The anointed is the Christ, he is the Messiah, he is the Son of God. Now let us turn 
to this statement concerning the root. Who is going to open the Bible? Who is going to give it meaning? And John began to cry, as we are told in the fifth chapter of Revelation. He saw the book, but it was sealed with seven seals. And the wise one asked, who can open the book? Who can break the seal? And when no one in heaven, or on earth, or below, below the earth, could answer that he could, John began to weep. And then this wise one said to him, weep not. Lo, there is one. One from the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he has conquered. He can open the book and it's sealed. Now, who is the root of David? Go to the end of the book. And Jesus said to the angel, Say unto John, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star. He is the root, he is the father of David. He is also the offspring. So the grandfather and the grandson are one and the same being. I am the root and the offspring of David. David remains the son of God. Then what is this offspring comes out of you? He is buried in you. One day you're going to experience it. Out of your own being will come not another, will come you. And you will know you are the father of David. Because you'll see him. And he'll call you father. And you will know he's your son. And there'll be no uncertainty as to this relationship. It's all buried in man. So what is man? That I should be mindful of him? Well, these are not the words of scripture. These are the words of the poet. Because the words in scripture, the psalmist is asking the question, what is man that thou art mindful of him? But the poet turned it around and said to put words in the mouth of the Lord, who said, why should I be mindful of man? Because the whole is contained in man. This whole venture is already done. It's all in man. The kingdom of the world has already become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Because it has been accomplished. And it's being accomplished in the individual. One after the other. It has been fulfilled in me. All that is said in scripture, I have actually experienced it. The finding of David. Everything said in that book, I have actually experienced. In a spiritual sense. But when it came to me, it was just like this room, just as real. It was a cubic reality. There's not a thing, I would say, gossamer about it. The whole thing was real. One step after the other unfolds itself within the individual. That's who you are. Now it came after this one could break the seal. So he gives meaning to scripture. Scripture began to take on a meaning after the lion of the tribe of Judah, who had conquered, who was the root of David, discovered David, for only the son can reveal the father. No one knows who the son is except the father, and no one knows who the father is except the son, and anyone to whom the son chooses to reveal him. So until David comes, you've been taught to believe that Jesus is the son of God. You've been taught to believe that Jesus Christ is like a, an extra title, that Christ is like a surname, Jesus Christ. It isn't so at all. It is the Lord Jesus and his Christ who is the Son of God. For Christ is the Son of God. And the Son of God is David. That Davidic tradition is buried in you individually. And you're going to fulfill it to the very end. All the kingdoms of the earth will vanish. They'll leave not a trace behind them. For this everlasting divine history is all contained within you and you're going to fulfill that history of salvation. Every job, not one little thing will you miss. And then you will know 
why God is mindful of man. Because the whole secret of God is contained within man. God himself is buried in man. In scripture he is called, in the Old Testament, Jehovah. In the New he is called Jesus. But this is the same being buried in man. And his son is with him. The whole drama is a relationship between father and son. And one day you will find it. If the whole vast world rose in opposition, it would make no difference to me, for I'm speaking from experience. I'm not theorizing. I'm not speculating. I'm telling you exactly what I have experienced. And the day will come that that which is now imprisoned within you, after you are born from above, this body of yours will be split in two from top to bottom. And the spirit that has been held captive through the ages will be set free. When he is set free, he ascends like a fiery serpent. So the ancient teachers in the second century of the Christian world, they spoke of this being, the Christ in man, as the suffering servant, and also the serpent in the wilderness. You will find it in the work of the second century. That serpent in the wilderness that was called the Savior, one looked upon it, you were saved. You don't look upon it, you experience it. And all that is now taking place here, when he opened the eyes of the blind, he said, what do you see? He said, I see men, but they look like trees walking. I see men, but they look like trees walking. That's a perfect vision. If you saw a man, as you see them on a chart, minus the skin, and saw all the great nerve centers and all the nerves of the body and all the blood vessels, all the veins and all the arteries, all anchored in the brain and all turned down to see an inverted tree. Looks just like a tree, but inverted. Now, the day will come, it's going to be turned up. And the root will remain the same, it's the brain, but then the tree grows up. It's now turned down into generation, then it'll be turned around into regeneration. I recall my vision of maybe 12 years ago. The man is now gone from this world. He was second in the Labour Party when Ashley was Prime Minister. And I saw him in this wonderful vision one night. I came with a group of men, all turned up. They were like human stag, antlers reaching up almost to the sky, growing out of the brain. And he took a branch and placed it on his head, thinking it would give him the same power that they enjoyed. And he ran and jumped and fell flat on his face. Went back again, he couldn't quite understand how they could cross a chasm, with no difficulty whatsoever. There was not a thing in the world beyond their power to bring it captive to them. They could cross the ocean without any difficulty. And as this thing grew, this enormous power. And every time he tried it, he fell. He was trying to do what every one of the world tries to do, to do it from without. All the outer ceremonies, all the outer rituals, all the outer degrees that men give each other, it doesn't work that way at all. It all comes from within because the whole thing is within. And when man is turned around by a complete splitting of the temple, for the curtain of the temple is torn in two from top to bottom, and at the base of your spine you're going to see a golden pulsing liquid light. And as you see it, you're going to know that you are it. You're actually looking at yourself, and yet it is formless. And you fuse with it. And then you become that fiery serpent, and up you go into the rain, and it vibrates like thunder. Then you are completely turned around. The energies that went down into generation are now turned up into regeneration. <laughs>